Hey guys, it's Amon and Christina from, from Our Rich, Rich Journey. Journey. So we heard a staggering stat the other day, and it is one in four families that are making $150,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. So this was mind blowing to us because people that are making six figures are living paycheck to paycheck. In this video, we are going to explore the reason why. And we're going to talk about what we've observed and how maybe you can avoid these same pitfalls regardless of if you're making $100,000 or $50,000 a year. You can still institute some of the things that we're going to talk about in this video to avoid living paycheck to paycheck. Now we have 11 reasons why people live paycheck to paycheck. Let's start with the first reason. The first is people don't know where their money is going. Especially people that earn a lot of money. They just tend to spend whatever they make. If they got it, they're going to spend it. And the real reason why this happens is because they do not have a budget. And the second is class. And we've talked about this in other videos. When we talk about class, we're talking about people that are trying to keep up with the Joneses. They want to specify what class they're in and they want people to acknowledge that they fall within a certain class. So instead of saving your money and investing your money, you're trying to buy materialistic things in order to prove that you belong in a certain class. You're really trying to be flashy when instead you should be saving and investing. Yeah, this idea of defining yourself by class is a very dangerous thing because you define yourself by how people see you, when in fact you should be defining yourself by how much assets you have, by how stable you are from a financial standpoint. And when you're living paycheck to paycheck to keep up with this perceived notion of class, it is a very dangerous place to be. Number three is you are buying too many gadgets. Now, instead of saving money and not living paycheck to paycheck, Every raise you get, you go out and you buy the new iPhone, you go and buy, buy the new coffee maker, you have the new blenders, every possible toy you have. I mean, we've gone over people's houses and on their kitchen countertops, they have like three or four coffee makers, an espresso machine, all these blenders. These are all things that are chipping away at what you should be doing as far as saving. And number four is food. If you're eating out three or more times a week, you're probably eating out too much. And if you're eating out at expensive restaurants, that's cutting into your paycheck even more. So you need to reduce your amount of eating out and you need to really focus on eating healthy in the home. Now, especially if you are eating out in the morning before work or you're eating out at lunch and then you're eating out at dinner, I mean, you could eat out all three meals of the day. Now that is a significant amount of money. And we've talked about how much money you can save by just cooking at home. Now number five is clothes. And I think this is the silent killer of any budget, is that people that buy clothes consistently, they almost shop as a pastime. And we've seen friends that have so many clothes in their closets that they never wear them, the tags are still on the clothes, and the worst. And this one, it kind of bothers me. If you have more clothes that can fit in your closet, that you have to take clothes out every season and bring them up for the new season. And you see this with people that have clothes in their basement or clothes in their attic and they bring them out just for the seasons. That is too many clothes. And number six is cars. If you have more cars than you have people in your household with driver's license, then you have too many cars and you're spending too much money on cars. And you know, another test of whether or not you're spending too much on cars is take a look at how much money is in your retirement account and then look at how much you've spent on cars. If you have spent more on cars than, are in you, than is in your retirement account, you spent too much on cars. So there's luxury cars, there's owning too many cars, but then there's also this idea that if you're buying brand new cars, you're spending too much on a car. Mm -hmm. You should be buying used cars. And I understand that there's a camp of people that believe in purchasing new cars and you can only get a new car, but I think if you run the numbers, you can really see that you could save a lot more by purchasing used cars. Yeah, cars are a real pet peeve of ours because there are so many people that will have a car payment for their entire life. And they've accepted that as the norm. It is not normal to have a car payment forever. And number seven is a house. People always wanna get a bigger and better house. When in fact, the house they have is just fine. We did a video a couple months ago on why your house is too big. And most Americans are not utilizing all the space in their home, but yet they feel like they need a bigger and better home. 
And it's not just about purchasing more home that's causing you to live paycheck to paycheck. When you purchase more home, there are also other things that are associated with it. You have more repairs to make because your home is bigger. You have to fill the home with more furniture because your home is bigger. All of these things are associated with purchasing a bigger home and that causes you to live paycheck to paycheck. And number eight is spending money on your children. Now we love our girls and we do honestly spend money on our kids, but I think you can overdo this. I think a lot of times parents want to please their kids too easily and they find that materialistic things are the quick way to make their kids happy very quickly. They'll buy the new gadgets, they'll buy the new clothes, they'll buy anything to satisfy their kids' needs, but they're not really assessing whether or not their kids should have these things. Another area of overspending is when you spend for prestige. And this is when you send your children to certain clubs or to certain events or certain activities because the other kids in the neighborhood are going to the same thing. Not necessarily for the quality of the activity, but because everyone else is doing the same thing. And number nine are the toys. And I'm talking about things like RVs, ATVs, boats, and timeshares. People will spend a lot of money on these things and never use them, but they're buying them because they feel like they have the extra money to do it, so they might as well do it. Now, not only are these things costly to purchase, but they're also very costly to maintain. So if you have a timeshare, you're, char you're being charged monthly fees associated with a timeshare for just maintenance. Same thing with RVs, with boats, there's maintenance costs associated with them that are also eating up at your paycheck. Yeah, you see this all the time with RVs and boats, where people, they don't even have the space in their, in their yard or their garage to maintain these things. They have to go buy another storage space for their RV or their boat. And number 10 is financing your vacations. Now, many people are getting loans to go on vacation or putting their vacations on their credit cards and not paying them back right away. If you finance your vacation, not only are you paying just for the vacation, but all of the interest that has accrued for the cost of the vacation. And that can cause your vacation to be maybe twice as much as it normally would have been. And the last thing, and this is kind of a bonus, is you are not increasing your income. So you can stay stagnant at your current income and that's fine, but you're gonna have to bring your expenses down so that you don't live paycheck to paycheck. But if you wanna get out of this cycle, you're gonna to have to increase your income. Now you can get a raise at your job or you can start a side hustle. And we talk a lot about side hustles on this channel. But what we're saying is that you have to do something about the income side of your paycheck to paycheck issue. So these are the 11 factors that we've identified that contribute to people living paycheck to paycheck. So if you're one of those persons that live paycheck to paycheck, look at these 11 factors and see how they're impacting you. See if you can make any changes in order to get out of that paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. And if you find something that works for you, leave a comment down below and let us know how it turned out. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and join, join the, the journey. journey.